welcome you to, again to Pine Grove General Baptist Church morning worship service. And we're very happy that you're with us, whether you're physically here in the church or at home watching on the internet. We're really glad that you chose to spend this time with us. Will you please join me in prayer? Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the blessings of life and all the blessings that you send down on each and every one of us, Lord. We know that good things come from you, only good things come from you. And Lord, we're tempted to complain. But really, Lord, when we fasten our eyes on you, we have nothing to complain about. For you are the, the wonderful God and creator, our Father, the master of the universe, counselor, friend. Lord, we ask you to look on those who are sick in our community and around the world, Lord. Touch them. Touch the caregivers. Whatever the illness or problem is, Lord, if it's physical or mental, Lord, reach down and touch them. For you. You're the only one who has true healing. Lord, again, we ask you to be with those who've lost loved ones. And Lord, those who've lost loved ones and had such destruction in them. Tornadoes which passed through on Friday night through several states. Lord, just be with those people. Lord, let them know that they're not alone. Inspire us to help where we can. Show us all we can do to help. Lord, we pray for the leaders of our country, those who need to turn to you first to make decisions, so that their decisions will be wise, wise under your will. Lord, we just we pray for them. Even when we don't agree with them, we still pray for them, Lord. Lift them up. They're only men. They need your guidance. Lord, we pray for the lost this morning, those all around our community, all around our area, state, nation, hemisphere, world, or that are lost and undone. Lord, cast a stumbling block in front of them. So that they'll fall and have to look up to you, Lord. And for where we can help, let us be willing to say, send me. But a kind word or an encouraging word or just a hand up and let them see that Christ has made this, this, this complete difference and a complete difference in our life. That they too can come to you. Be with us in this service, Lord. Keep your hand on me that I'll say what you would have me to say. And that we render any and all glory to you, Lord. That's who it belongs to. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Again this morning, Christ died and arose for all mankind. And that's the simple fact of the gospel. That no matter where you're from or what you've done, what your life has been. When you believe in your heart that Jesus is the true Son of God, you repent of your sins and put your entire trust in Him and hold nothing back. You make yourself willing to let Him change your life by indwelling you with the Holy Spirit. Anyone can be saved. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18 says, For Christ died for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. He was put to death in the body, but made alive by the Spirit. And so you see, regardless of what some men out there will say, that only some people are able to be saved, that is not what the Bible says. We just read that. It's not about what church you go to. It's definitely 
says continuously, it's definitely not who the preacher is. If you're following a man, you're lost. A man can't get you there. A man can't get you to salvation. And it's not about a man-made doctrine or set of rules, because mankind has come up with a lot of things and ideas on their own, and so have so some Christians. But it's not about that. And it's not about who our parents or our ancestors were, and whether or not they were saved. See, all these things are not part of the simple facts of the gospel. The salvation is not about anything good we have done, or anyone, any man has ever done, or ever will do. It's all about what Jesus Christ has done for everyone. Christ died for all the sins of the world. All of them. Yours, mine, the guy next door, the person on the other side of the world. He's already paid the price for all of mankind's salvation. And he's waiting for each person to accept it. That's our part. To come to him. You know, we talk, we talk like this every Sunday morning. And, but the deal is, the real truth is, no Christian should ever tire of hearing and telling about what he's done for all of us. You see, we all came from the same life of sin. Once we remember that, we should never tire of what he's done for us and what he can do for other people. What he can do for anyone. It's all up to them. Well, a year ago today, you know, we were back during the second surge of this pandemic, I guess. And a year ago, well, we suspended live worship services to try to do our part. And I said then, you know, it wasn't because of government pressure. It actually was to relieve the health care workers as the hospital worker, hospitals were again filling up and it was reported to us that the nurses and the doctors were again working terribly long hours with low or little rest and there just weren't enough of them to go around. So I think that this morning, regardless of what you think now, I think this morning that was the situation then. And I think this morning that we need to remember that time again and, and say again thank you to those who who were out there devotedly working to help those who were in need, those who were sick, those who needed that care. So thank you to all our medical workers and people who supported them in the hospitals and all the, all the outlying, it, it takes a huge amount of people to make all that work, so thank you. And so again this morning, here we are another week closer to Christmas. You know, and we're looking around and all the sayings and the usual preparations are being made. And this year it seems to be more like what we consider normal. And you know, maybe somebody's thinking they've got a shortage or this or that. Uh, I don't know, maybe that is true. I've not noticed it myself except my needs and wants and things that I look for are pretty simple. So, I don't know about the shortages, but... It seems like it's more normal to me this year, except it started a lot, easy, a lot sooner than it should have. We couldn't even get Thanksgiving over, and people were already thinking before that, long before that. But there's even lots of well-wishing, and even on, you know, I, I guess social media a bad rap sometimes. And I do use it, and post these sermons on YouTube, and on Facebook, and different things, but I've noticed that there is a lot of well-wishing on the social media. I saw one that stuck me with me. It stuck with me. Things do, like a couple weeks ago I talked about a sign. But this one really stuck with me, and I think it was worth sharing. It said, all I want for Christmas is for the person reading this to be healthy, happy, and loved. You know, that's really a great sentiment. That really is a wonderful sentiment for a person to have. But I was thinking, isn't that really what God has been saying to mankind since the beginning in His Word? And then, when we, He's not only said it, He's been supplying everything necessary for it to be so. Everything for us necessary to be, us to be healthy, happy, and loved. God supplies. 
Now I want you to look, turn your Bible into Exodus, and we're going to look at a familiar passage, but I want you to look at how he did this even in the desert when the Israelites were grumbling about their lot. Complaining is all men do. It sounds just like us today. Anything that goes on will start being a complaint. Everything happens. So Exodus chapter 16, verse 13 to 18. That evening, quail came and covered the camp. And in the morning, there was a layer of dew around the camp. And when the dew was gone, thin flakes like frost on the ground appeared on the desert floor. And when the Israelites saw it, they said to each other, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread the Lord has given you to eat. This is what the Lord has commanded. Everyone is to gather as much as they need. Take it over for each person you have in your tent. And the Israelites did as they were told, and some gathered much and some little. And when they measured it by the Omer, the one who gathered much did not have too much, and the one who gathered little did not have too little. Everyone had gathered just as much as they needed. See, God always supplies just what is needed. It, uh, it doesn't matter about the question of what it is. He supplies just what's needed. And he supplies it even when we don't know what it is. Because the Israelites here say, what is it? You know? And he supplies it even, even when we don't know. You know? When we don't know not only what it is, but when we don't know what it is that we do need. The difference there is when we get it. But... We may not even know what we need, but he supplies it. But when we put our full dependence, our complete full dependence on him, on God, even in the darkest of times, he supplies. And that's a hard lesson to learn, because people want to do things on their own. The real truth is, he supplies especially when we put our full dependence on Him and quit trying to scheme around what we're going to do. Psalm 46, verse 9 through 11 says, He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. He says, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. So that psalm has not changed. We're different people from that time, but it hasn't changed. God is still saying, be still and know that I am God. So God's message to the person reading this, when you're reading it, guess what? It's how to be healthy, happy, and loved. Be still and know that I am God. Be healthy, happy, and loved. God's people may count themselves safe and make themselves strong in Him in whom there is always help sufficient no matter what is the case. God can handle it no matter what is the case. But what we need to do is put Him first and place our complete trust in Him. And when we do, we can look at our life and see that we are really healthy, happy, and loved. It doesn't take a lot to be happy. It does take being loved. It helps to be healthy. And God can help us with that. Last week I mentioned that just at just the right time, Jesus came and died for mankind. You know, that's what we talked about. and We had the right message as well. And at just the right time, God shows all how much He cares. Man may try to show how much we care, but how can whatever we do begin to compare with the love that God sends so that we can be healthy, happy, and know that we are loved? Even when we don't think we are, we just look at the facts, we can know that we are loved. Romans chapter 5 verse 8 says that God demonstrates in His own love for us in this, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. You know, when we understand that, we can know 
that we're loved. Now there's a, a guy, I don't really know, again, an illustration here I found that I want to read to you. It's, it's a fairly modern story because of what it contains. And the man who wrote it, his name was Arnott. And I don't know much about him either, but I did love the story in the illustration, so I'm going to give it to you. It seems a crew of explorers penetrated far within the Arctic Circle in search of other expeditions that had gone before them. They'd gone, and they'd never returned. Well, failing to find the missing men, and yet unwilling to abandon hope, they leave supplies of food, they carefully cover them up with stones, on some prominent headlands, and with the necessary markings and intimations, or gravings and signs, they put up these, on, these signs written on brass, a place of brass so that they would be there and survive. So if the original adventurers survive, and on their homeward journey, faint yet pursuing, fall in with these treasures at once hidden and revealed, the food when found will seem to those who are famished men the, the, the smaller blessing. See, the real proof which the food supplies that their country cares for them is sweeter than the food. So, the lesson, the proof that God cares for us is placed beyond a doubt. The unspeakable gift of His Son to be our Savior should melt any dark suspicion to the contrary from our hearts. If we don't believe that God cares about us, think about what He did. Think about Jesus coming to earth. All of it is in His gift to mankind. It's Jesus Christ. Indeed, it is his gift to all of mankind. And so, many have been talking to the church right now. I don't know everyone's heart. But it, so to those who might be listening, by whichever means, and who do not know Jesus as your Savior, I want you to, I want to ask this. Have you ever thought of yourself as a lost coin? Because Jesus explained how the lost they are. In Luke chapter 15, verse 8, it says, For suppose a woman has ten silver coins and loses one. Doesn't she light a lamp, sweep the house, search carefully until she finds it? And when she finds it, she calls her friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I have found my lost coin. In the same way, I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. What a story. Rejoicing. Wow, the angels in the presence of God. Dean Vaughn, who was an English minister, wrote a good message to the lost based on that parable. I'm going to read that one to you. Here's really something if you're lost. Listen to this message. Though you may care little about your lost soul, God cares for it very much. He's lit his candle, the candle of divine revelation, and he's throwing its illumination, it's throwing its light upon you. Hinder not. Don't defeat it. Is search for your soul. Love herself might light a candle, and that yet the lost coin not be found under the long accumulation of dirt. This dirt of easily besetting the sins of long indulged habits. So the terrible goes on, parable goes on to speak of a sweeping. A sweeping. She swept the entire house to search carefully until she finds it. Rejoice with me. I tell you, there's rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. That's why each and every week I want to make certain that we put out the gospel message. 
gospel message is what saves people. It's what helps them to examine their life. It helps us to take stock of where we are. And are we truly serving our, our Father as we would for all the good and great things that He's done for us? That won't, these great acts won't get us saved. But shouldn't we be thankful for it? Shouldn't we rejoice and tell others about what He's done for us? So again, this morning, if you're listening and you realize that you've never made Jesus the complete Lord of your life, right now is the time to surrender your whole life to God by just asking Jesus for forgiveness of sins and invite Him into your life as your complete Lord and repent of those sins and learn to follow Him and to heed the, that voice that Holy Spirit that He will send into your life to help guide you. You, you won't know everything at first and you'll make mistakes and guess what? We all still make mistakes. But He's there. He's there to help us through those things. He's there to love us. See that Christmas we're going to celebrate the birth of the baby Jesus. But He came to be our Savior. And that's what we should celebrate the most. But if you've said a prayer this morning and you've asked Jesus into your heart, and I can guide you through a sinner's prayer if you want that at some time, but this morning if you've asked Him into your heart, but don't let it end there. I always want to tell you that. If you're at home, tell a friend what has changed in your life. If you're here, come up and talk to us. If you've been in the church and you're not in the church and you're out of church now because so many people have left during the pandemic, and if you're out of it, your church that you were in, get back in it. They need you. Just the same as we need you here. Sure, you can worship God at home, but you can't help lift up someone else. There's just such a thing about meeting together. So get back into your church. But if you don't have a church, find one. If you've accepted Jesus, well, find one. You can contact us with information on our Facebook page. We'd love to hear messages from you. And hear what's going on in your life. We get quite a few prayer requests. And we certainly, certainly do read them and send up prayers for each one who sends them to us. But if you're here in this area and around where we live and this part of Arkansas and you're looking for a place to worship, well, we'd love to have you come and worship with us. We've got plenty of room. We've got a nice paved road to the church. We've got a good parking lot. We're not hard to find. Again, we're Pine Grove General Baptist Church 102 Silver Tree Road in Shirley, Arkansas. Come join us. Help us to lift up God's name as we worship together. Heavenly Father, as we close this morning, Lord, Lord, we just thank you once again for all those things that you do for us. All the wonderful things. And Lord, if Anyone's on the brink of making the decision for you, Lord, just push them on over for us. It'll be the most wonderful experience they've ever had in their life. Their life, will, entire life will change. You know, we know. Lord, we beseech you, just touch them. If there's something we can do, send us. Be with us as we go home. Keep us safe until we return or until we see your face in glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Again, if you get anything from what we say in these messages and you want to share it, they're totally meant to be shared. 
Spread the gospel. Spread the glad tidings. Jesus is Lord. 